Hey everybody, it's Dave from Brick101 reporting live from quarantine, uh, not going outside unless I have to, and my hair is getting too long. Um, anyway, uh, I participated in Brick World Virtual today, and it was pretty awesome. Uh, so basically, a bunch of fans showed up and voted on what I would do, whether I was going to build something from Five Nights at Freddy's, or talk about Nightly News at Nine, Chapter 3. And surprisingly, uh, the Nightly News at Nine fans won. They, they came in force and uh, won the poll. So I did a whole reading of a script for Chapter 3 that I had written six years ago in 2014, uh, which ended up being surprisingly relevant for our modern situation here. But uh, yeah, so I did a dramatic reading of that, where I did the voices of Zundal Silverspine, Report on Battlefilia, Phil Brickley, and you know, the whole, oh right, Malifios! <laughs> uh, so basically, that kind of thing. So if you're into that and want to hear me read through a script that's six years old that might never get produced, but it's nightly news at nine content, um, and it's, you know, something nobody has seen before today, uh, watch this hour-long video. <laughs> uh, and um, so I was talking back to people live in the chat, um, and you don't see the chat in the recorded video of Zoom, though you will see some faces of fans that were listening along today, and um, it was pretty cool. Uh, so I'm gonna do this again at the next Brick World Virtual, which is in June. So I'll put a link in the description to the next Brick World Virtual so you can go ahead and get a ticket or an annual pass, and we can hang out in June and do something cool like a live build of a set. Um, the Second part of what I did at Brickworld Virtual was a live build of um, Zundar Silverspine's head. Um, so I'll put up that video probably tomorrow as soon as it's done processing. Anyway, enjoy <laughs> Night News at Nine, Chapter Three, a partial script reading. Bye. Cool. Um, all right, so we're at 2.16, so we're past the time and we have 75% Nightly News at 9, 25% Five Nights at Freddy's, so we're gonna do Nightly News at 9 today, so let's do it. All right, so I'm going to open up my, uh, my folder on my computer that has all of my Nightly News at 9 documents, and let's see, where is the latest version? Chapter three. All right. So I'm going to, I'm going to share my screen so you can read along, but I'm basically going to do a dramatic reading of this script. So that'll probably take us, you know, about 20, 30 minutes. Uh, and then we can talk about chapter three a little bit. Um, we can then ask some broad questions about nine, nine and then we'll build something. So that's, I think, the plan for the next few hours, uh, for those of you who are going to stick around for the next few hours. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll just go from there. So let's share my screen again. And can I share? Yep. We're going to share this. Um, OK, so um, my original concept for the Nightly News at Nine when I started making it is that it would be uh, an episodic show um, kind of made for YouTube where each tiny installment was a few minutes, but then those would add up together to equal basically a television length, which is 22 minutes. Um, and then that would be a chapter. So uh, if you've seen chapter one and chapter two, you know in total they're about 22, 24 minutes. So they're kind of TV length. And that um, in my vision, every each of them happen one day after another in this world of Figuria, um, and that there's eight days in the Figurian week, but four of them are the weekday and four of them are the weekend, so that uh, every four chapters would kind of be a complete story. So chapter three, it wasn't going to be like the end of a trilogy, it was going to be the third of four installments in the first week of many weeks that I had in a grand vision for what Nightly News and Nine would be, uh, then it turned into the reality of, wow, it takes a long time to make stop motion animation. So anyway, 
in my original vision, chapter three was going to be kind of another fun one-off that didn't necessarily close any storylines, but opened up new ones, similar to chapter two being focused on robots. And so it introduced a whole bunch of different robot things. Chapter three was going to focus on pirates. Um, so there was going to be a lot of different pirate things. Um, and uh, so that was the name I gave to it, was just chapter three pirates. Uh, oh, AGV, do you still need me to hold for a second? Are you good? Um, so yeah, this draft I wrote back in 2014. So it was about a year after chapter two finished. So my script writing process, I had chapters one and two drafted before I even started animating uh, chapter one. Um, but then chapter three, I hadn't started writing really until I finished animating chapter two. So chapters one and two were able to go so quickly because I had done the scripts ahead of time. Chapter three, I didn't even really start scripting until after chapter two was done because just the production took up so much of my time. Um, and so this is the, ver the last version that was kind of like complete that I scripted. I've changed what I think I want chapter three to be a lot since this point, uh, just in my head. I haven't written it all out, but um, this is one version of what I thought chapter three would be. So let's jump into it. So we open uh, with the, the intro, uh, you know, which is always the same. Uh, so you hear the voiceover of Eye of Eyes bringing you the latest. That's not an Eye of Eyes voice. Okay. Bringing you the latest stories from all four corners of Figuria. This is the Nightly News at Nine with Phil and Sherry. It's actually much longer than that, you know, the intro, but we don't need to do that. Um, so then the first segment is would be, you know, you know, this would launch as a separate video before it would all come together, is our top story tonight is question mark. So that would be the name of this first segment. So we open in the newsroom where we always see Phil and Sherry. But instead of Phil and Sherry, it's Reporto about Ophelia and Legsley von Sharkaton sitting at the desk. And so, Reporto about Ophelia, let me channel her. Okay. Good evening, loyal viewers. I'm Reporto about Ophelia. And this Leg Shark and I are filling in for Phil and Sherry tonight. Leg Shark, nom, 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 nom. He's chewing on the desk. Oh my gosh, that's uh, that's the Nightly News at Nine. Uh, you right there. Let me spotlight your video for a second. Uh, we've got uh, one of one of the fans here showing off uh, their uh, self-built Nightly News at Nine thing. That's awesome. You can all see that. Um, and um, super cool. Yeah. Uh, so exactly. We'd be at the news desk just like that, but imagine that it's Robophilia Oh, and there's the newsmobile. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Um, okay, back to the script. And... Okay, uh, so, report about Ophelia. Our most splendiferous story tonight is all about pirates. Earlier today, the entire pirate labor union went on strike and Figuria has been thrown into economic turmoil. Bum, bum, bum. Uh, so that's, you know, what Reporto about Ophelia thinks is the most important story today. And so then we'd show like an image of pirates like holding like strike picketing signs and titles like, you know, buccaneer boycott or swashbuckler strike. Um, and then uh, the Eye of Eyes, incoming transmission from the newsmobile, and then report about Ophelia. Oh, can't it wait? I was just about to tell my story. Eye of Eyes, I'm a semi omniscient being older than time, not your answering machine, patching it through now. But turmoil, ha rumpf. So report about Ophelia really wants to tell her story, but uh, Phil and Sherry are telling their own story from the newsmobile. So then we'd see an exterior shot of the newsmobile hovering above a green versus orange war zone. Words on the screen, somewhere above last, lesser pastel. If you remember from the original orange versus green war, 
uh, it uh, originated in Lesser Pastel because that's where Tommy Turntable changed his favorite color from orange to green. Split screen between Roporto Botophilia at the newsroom and Sherry Tiles in the newsmobile. Sherry Tiles. <clears throat> Come in, Robophilia. This is Sherry. Uh, do you read me? We've located Zandar and are preparing for our final descent into Lesser Pastel. Robophilia puts her hand wrench in front of her mouth and makes static noises. Oh, um, you're breaking up. Call back after I finish my pirate story. Sherry Tiles, this is a video call. I can see you covering your mouth to make the static noise, Robophilia. Report of Autophilia. Oh, well, that doesn't change the fact that your story will have to wait. I'm the anchor tonight, so I get to decide the most important story, and it's obviously pirates. Um, and then Report of Autophilia <laughs> turns back and talks to the viewers, all of you. That's the name of today's chapter, after all, because Reporto Botophilia knows she's in a story and knows the name of the story. She's got metafictional awareness. Anyway, uh, Sherry. Phil and, I are, Phil and I are out here trying to rescue Zundar and end a massive war that has claimed millions of lives. How could a silly labor dispute be more important than that? Reporto Botophilia. But this strike threatens the economy. Think about all the lost jobs and coins and stuff. Um, also, side note, I wrote this in 2014 when we were not in an economic crisis like we are right now. So that's just a strange resonance here. Sherry Tiles, this is a, wa this is a waste of time. I hereby invoke NNN company policy number seven. And then the words NNN company policy number seven flash on the screen accompanied by epic music. Think like the daily double music from Jeopardy, like doo -doo -doo -doo. <sighs> Uh, Reporto Botophilia. Excellent, excellent, a fight to the death. Those are my specialty, on guard. So Reporto Botophilia thinks that company policy number seven is that her and Sherry are gonna fight to the death. Um, and so then similar to when Reporto Botophilia fought Grabor, uh, it would like do a cool split screen as if Robophilia was about to fight Sherry. Uh, and Sherry Tile says, no, you're thinking of company policy number 17. Number seven is where we, where we all democratically vote on what story. No fights to the death. Report about Ophelia. Voting? That's even more boring than war and the economy. <sighs> Sherry Tiles. Don't worry, I don't think it will take long. Phil, Zundar, and I obviously want to vote for the Orange-Green War, and I'm sure Eyes and Melissa Malifios won't vote for pirates, so the vote's already over. Reporto Botophilia. Whoa, 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 if we're gonna vote, we're gonna do this properly. Activate six-way split screen. So it goes from a two-way split screen between Robophilia and Sherry to a six-way split screen where Sherry, Phil, Robert, Robophilia, <laughs> Legsley, and Eye of Eyes are on screen. Zundar is not present of course, because he is still under the control of the evil power of green. Um, so Sherry and Phil are inside the new newsmobile. Robert is standing somewhere snowy and mysterious. Uh, and then, of course, Robophilia and Legsley are at the news desk, and Eye of Eyes is in her giant cavernous studio. Except this time, rather than playing Pong on her eye screen, she would be playing Tetris. Robert Villain, oh, am, am I on? Uh, yes, welcome to the opening ceremonies for the first ever ice blocky grand tournament thingy. Let's hope that they don't go horribly awry. <laughs> Reporto Botophilia. No, no, no. This is no time for fun and frivolity. It is serious voting time. Everyone put on your voting hats. And then she put on some weird hat. Oh yeah, she puts on a silver bucket on her head and she gives Legsley a gray wizard hat because that's obviously a voting hat. Um, Phil Berkeley, uh, my voting hat is also my blending in with a herd of buffalo hat. So then he puts on a giant <laughs> brown buffalo hat, uh, the one from the old Western Indian sets that's like a giant buffalo. <sighs> Sherry sighs as she puts on a pointy red hat, the old princess hat from the old castle sets. The eye of eyes would morph to display a yellow hat with a daisy coming out of it. So everybody's got their own voting hat. <laughs> Robert Billing, 
voting hat. Um, I don't think I have a voting hat. Is this an Opalistopian thing? There wasn't a lot of voting in Castlantis, what with all the divine monarchies and whatnot. So that right there is referencing the larger uh, geography of uh, Figuria, if you've ever seen Zundar's map of Figuria. So New Block City, where Nightly News at Nine is centered, is in the country of Opalistopia, uh, or the continent Opalistopia. But Robert Villain slash Malifios actually comes from Castlantis, where everything's like old-timey and medieval. So he's not used to democracy because everywhere he came from was all about kings and queens and rulers. So that's why He's not even familiar with this concept of voting and uh, hats. Um, uh, Kevin Wagner is saying yes <laughs> uh, in the chat. Thank you. I'm going to take a drink of water because anytime I do the mellifious voice, it really hurts my throat. OK. Um, OK, Reporto Barofilia. No worries, Robert. I have just the chap chapeau for your tet. Just call me Haberdash Ophelia. So that's some French language. She's basically saying, I have a hat for your head. Um, so then she uses her extendo arms to reach through everybody's split screen. So she's again, breaking the fourth wall. So her arm would come out of her split screen and go across everybody's split screen all around the whole screen and end on Robert. And then she would put like a graduation cap on his head. And then her arm would go back to her split screen. Sherry Tiles, um, <laughs> ugh, more like shouldn't have made her anchor for a day, Ophelia, because she's not enjoying this whole thing. That's exactly the hat Sherry is wearing at this moment. Thank you. See, you got it, uh, which is always in the background of the, um, the news thing. Okay, report about Ophelia. <laughs> What's that, uh, Sherry? You'd like to cast your vote first so it will be even more embarrassing when you lose? Sounds good to me. Sherry Tiles, uh, I vote that our top story tonight be about Phil and I rescuing Zundar from the clutches of green and ending the orange-green war. I further move that Zundar's vote be counted in absentia for this story. Reporto Botophilia, very well, two votes for the orange-green war. Robophilia marks this on a big scoreboard behind the news desk. The title of the score scoreboard is, of course, Stories That Matter to Us, the tagline of Night News at Nine. Reporto Battle Filia. Phil, you're up next. Phil Brickley. He thinks he's blending with a crowd of buffalo, so he's just like, Buffalo, Buffalo? <laughs> Reporto Battle Filia. Now, Phil, before you cast your vote, I'd like to remind you of the mystery you uncovered during yesterday's show. And so this would be a flashback to chapter two when Phil Brickley realizes that Kapor, the actor in the show Police Show, which is a fake television show within the world of Nightly News at Nine, looks exactly like Reporto about Ophelia, and that's super suspicious. So if you remember, he thought that was weird. Um, and Phil is like, that Robocop looks, was just like Robophilia. Cheesy mystery music, I'm going to investigate. Sherry pops back into the flash, the flashback via split screen. Objection! Leading the witness! Uh, Robophilia pops into the flashback uh, via split screen. <laughs> Overruled! This isn't a trial! Uh, Phil's split screen appears in between Sherry's and Robophilia's in the flashback. Oh, perfect buffalo hat. Yes! Oh my gosh, you're on point. Um... Ro reporto about Ophelia. Phil, wouldn't you rather be investigating my mysterious origins than doing whatever Sherry wants? Phil, I don't know. Sherry and I are already here to do this story, but you did just say a lot of words, so I should probably agree with you. Reporto about Ophelia. Wonderful! That's one wasted vote from Phil. So Robophilia marks on the scoreboard Robophilia's mysterious mysterious origins and puts like Phil's vote marker there. Um, and then Phil says, hey, who are you calling a buffalo? <laughs> Sherry, Ugh, I'm surrounded by blockheads. Uh, Reporto Batophilia, uh, Robert, I assume you want to vote for whatever weird sports story you're covering today? Robert Villian, villain. 
actually, I'd like to vote for Maleficent. We haven't heard enough about his evil plans yet. And Sherry and Rob Robophilia are having none of that. Nope, they both veto that. Fine, I vote for Ice Blocky. <laughs> Report about Ophelia. Wonderful, moving on to Eye of Eyes. Eye of Eyes? I vote, I vote, we go to commercial break permanently. <laughs> Report about Ophelia. Way to keep it weird, eyes. Which brings us to our last two voters, me and the leg shark. Perfect. Legsley has a slack-jawed, dead-eyed expression. R Report about Ophelia. I vote for pirates, and the leg shark obviously votes for pirates. Sherry. Why obviously? He didn't do anything to indicate he wanted to vote for that. Report about Ophelia. Well, he worked on the story all day with me. Sherry. Phil worked on the story all day with me, and you still convinced him to vote against it. Legsley, wouldn't you rather vote for a story about tasty head melons? Sherry dangles tantalizing head melons in front of her. Um, Legsley perks up and starts chomping at the screen. Robophilia. Legsley, don't look at her. I mean, look at all these head melons I've got for you. Robophilia opens a magical portal in the air and head melons start raining into the studio. Legsley turns away from Sherry to the mounds of head melons and starts gobbling greedy. Ha ha! I win the voting! Robophilia is the best at bribery and sowing confusion! <laughs> um, Sherry, uh, even with Legsley's vote, that's still only two votes for pirates. Uh, Report about Ophelia. But Legsley's vote counts for two because according to company policy number seven, subsection 12, any NNN team member who eats another team member gets their vote. So he also gets Steve's deep seas vote. Because <laughs> if you remember, Steve deep sea was eaten by Legsley on day one in chapter one. Sherry, oh, fine, just do your pirate story and get it over with. Phil and I will just hover above this dangerous war zone waiting for you to finish. Uh, shot again of the newsmobile over the green versus orange war. Report about Ophelia. Sound, sounds perfect. Try not to die. Hoo -hoo. <laughs> uh, Sherry goes away, and so it's back to just report about Ophelia. Now, where was I? Oh, right. Pirates, economic turmoil. But first, this commercial break. Uh, I have eyes, finally. So that <laughs> right there <laughs> would be the first segment of chapter three as I used to envision it as pirates. So that would be like the opening news segment, um, kind of reminding everybody of all the plot lines that are going on and having some fun bickering between all the different characters. Because I realized that uh, we didn't get a lot of interaction between the cast in chapter one or chapter two. Robophilia is basically always off on her own, invest, you know, interrogating some other character, and we never really get m much of her interacting with Sherry or Phil. So I thought this split screen idea would be a fun way to get all the cast members interacting. Um, I'm going to drink some water, and then we'll go into the Buccaneer Adventure Cruise commercial. So again, cruise ships, not really a thing that anybody wants to do right now in 2020, but back in 2014 seemed like a reasonable commercial. Um, so uh, here's what I would do. You would make it look exactly like a cruise ad. So imagine a carnival cruise, Disney cruise, any one of those ads, lots of slow motion crossfading. Uh, so there'd be a fake pirate with a red, blue, yellow, and white beard standing on the deck of the ship. And his name is Captain Funbeard. Yahar! Ahoy and aloha, you scurvy landlubbers! I'm Captain Funbeard, yar! And I want to invite ye all to harve the vacation of our lifetime. A uh, close shot of him during that speech. At the end, he throws up his arms and we zoom out to see a pirate cruise ship all around him. So it's like a giant pirate ship that's also a cruise ship. So there's like masts and flags, but also just like people on pool slides, um, you know, having a fun time. The Buccaneer Adventure Cruise is the latest vacation invention. So vacation plus innovation. Vacation ovation from Big Crazy Party Cruise Lines. Maybe a logo for that cruise line. Come experience the pirate li lifestyle in safe voyeuristic luxury. So then there'd be a grand sweeping shot as uh, Funbeard walks in, in front of all sorts of crazy pirate cruise adventures. 
Um, Every passenger is given a pirate identity and wardrobe when they board the ship and encouraged to stay in character the whole cruise. So people would be walking on a gangplank and greeted and handed a slip of paper and then a pile of pirate clothes. Engage in real pirate activities like swabbing the deck. So pirates would be playing shuffleboard with brooms and buckets. So basically I took cruise activities and overlapped them with pirate activities. Walking the plank. So pirates would be jumping off of a diving board into a swimming pool filled with sharks, finding treasure. And then there'd be a pirate casino with a, a slot machine that a pirate was playing that would have like a big spinning wheel on it. And then like a treasure chest and like gold would pop out. And general carousing. So then there'd be pirates drinking and dancing. Buccaneer Adventure Cruise has something for everyone. On a romantic getaway, stay in one of our luxury suites like the Crow's Nest, the Cannon Room, or the Brig. So these would be like fancy hotel rooms, but they would be kind of piratey. So the Crow's Nest would be like the thing at the top of the mast where, you know, um, it's just like uh, where you look out. Or the Cannon Room would have lots of cannons and the Brig would just be like a, a dungeon. Uh, looking for family fun? Our crew of colorful, our crew of colorful costume characters is guaranteed to yet entertain young and old alike. So this is where the giant monkey and pirate or parrot costumes that I did how to build on would be showing up in the background because I had already started building things for this commercial. Um, and uh, Buccaneer Adventure Cruise, your fun is our duty. So give us your booty. Fast Talker, Buccaneer Adventure Cruise is a division of Big Crazy Party Cruise Lines and is not an authentic pirate experience. Any implications to the contrary in the preceding commercial are completely unintentional. Uh, so that would be our 30 second commercial break. Whew, that was a lot of talking. How's everybody doing? Thumbs up. <laughs> um, Thank you all for tuning in today. Uh, this is really fun uh, to have some huge fans here uh, hanging out and enjoying uh, this script that I wrote and hopefully getting like the images in your head of um, what I envisioned for this episode. Uh, even if you know I don't have the animations or even storyboards, uh, trying to give you the, the Dave brain experience with this script. Okay, so now we'd go back for our third segment, right? First segment was what is Rogers? Yeah, so this is an animation script for the Nightly News at Nine, which is a series that I have produced on my YouTube channel, Brick 101. You can go back and watch chapter one and chapter two if you've never seen them uh, to kind of get a feel for what those animations are like. Um, and we're reading through this unproduced script for chapter three and later I'll do some build related to this or my other concept for chapter three, which I'll describe after we finish this read through. So, um, so this is gonna be our third segment. So this is gonna be Robophilia's story that she wanted to talk about. Um, I forget like how well written this was. I don't think I even necessarily finished the full episode in this, but yes, report about Ophelia, there she is. Welcome back, loyal viewers and good riddance to everyone who left during the commercial break. Our top story tonight is full of danger, drama, and daring do, mostly performed by yours truly. This morning, pirates all across Figuria went on strike. Uh, so then we'd see pictures of pirates on strike. And of course, reporter about Ophelia would be like moving her arms around and jumping because she's just always very energetic. Um, that's right. The Skull and Crossbones United Labor League has pulled all of its workers off of active duty and put them on the picket line. I first noticed the strike when the power went out in my recharging station this morning. Initiate flashback sequence! Doo -doo -doo. So there'd be a flashbacky transition, and then we'd see Robophilia's apartment. Um, so I imagine that she is charged into a large battery where there's a indentation that's shaped exactly like Robophilia that she slots into and it's worried and there's sparks coming out of it and then the worrying dies down and the sparks sputter out and she's like 
Because she's charging up overnight because she's a robot. She needs to charge up. Well, what's the meaning of this? This is not protocol. Has my apartment been hacked? Show yourself, intruder, on guard. Because Robofilia is always ready for a fight to the death. That's just her style. So she would thrash around her darkened apartment. She'd attack a lamp thinking that it was a bad guy. And then she'd uh, head out to the window and look out. Oh, somebody referencing Lego Movie 2 Volume 1. Uh, yes, there were uh, trippy flashback transitions in that as well. Um, exterior shot of the building. Um, we see Robophilia looking out of the window at pirates protesting in the street. Um, and then a close up of, oh, she was charging in the beginning. Oh, wow, good, good memory. Um, yes, she was charging in the kitchen. Uh, close up shot of Robophilia's face. Uh, this series is called NNN um, on YouTube. You can find it on the YouTube channel, Brook 101. So close up of Robophilia's face, she shakes her fist at the air and screams, pirates! <laughs> Uh, exterior shot of Robophilia pushing through the crowd of pirates. Maybe some sight gags of different types of pirates. The pirates have, oh, protesty piratey songs. Oh, right. So I had a whole song here for the pirates. We've sailed across the oceans, we've carried your weight, and now we won't do it no more. Yo ho, ho ho, it's time to close the sore. We've been at the bottom, we've worked for a pittance, and now we are asking for more. Yo ho, yo ho, our demands can't be ignored. And whether you know it, You've come to depend on the pirates who do all your chores. Yo ho, yo ho, we're bringing the ship ashore. Uh, so that was just my like first pass at like what a pirate shanty chant that's also a protest song for a labor union would sound like. Because in the world of Figuria, the pirates all have a giant contract. They all work together. They're employed all over the world, um, and so they've all gone on strike today. So Robophilia goes up to one of the pirate protesters and interrogates them. Why is my power out? Pirates, it be a pirate strike today. We not pushing ye turbines until our demands are met. Wait, Robophilia, you spin power turbines for a living? Why haven't you been all replaced by robots? There's hundreds of displaced pinch bots who could use a good steady job. Because overnight, Robophilia became the leader of the pinch bots because she defeated their leader. So she's also trying to find work for all of her robot uh, children that she has now in the pinch bots. Pirate, there be dar city ordinances forbidding ye robots from working on yon power plants, yar. That would be like letting leg sharks work in head melon groves laughs at their own joke, har, 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 har. And then Robophilia is really mad at the ordinances. Ordinances! Um, and then, fine, I guess I'll just have to end this strike the hard way. Where is your leader? Because whenever Reporto Botophilia is faced with a problem, like pinch bots invasions, she just goes and beats up the leader. That's her plan for everything. Pirate, I ye be seeking Admiral Attorney Jacoby Quacone. She be at yonder port aboard her vessel, the litigious coyote. But beware, she be the most cunning captain in all of Figuria. Tis rumored that she wants Reporto back Reporto I don't have I don't have time to hear her whole backstory, nor do I want to have a flashback within a flashback. Uh, I just want my kids back. Wait, I mean, I just want my power back. Um, so that's making fun of those movies where there's always that hero who's just trying to get their kids back. Um, whew, okay, to the litigious coyote. Uh, so then she spins her magical transition wheel, which you might remember from chapter two, she has like a giant, uh, is it like a three by three radar dish that's got like a circle, you know, the stripes on it, like it's a big umbrella piece, four by four, four by four radar dish. So that would be her transition wheel. Um, so then we'd be at a dock and we'd see um, uh, Robophilia outside of a giant pirate ship gently floating at a dock and there's a giant coyote on the mask. I don't know how I'd make a coyote, but that was what I decided back when I wrote this script. So she walks up the gangway where there's a menacing pirate guard. 
Puerto Barofia. Step aside, menacing pirate. I'm here to interview your leader, even if I have to fight every last pirate in Figuria to get to her. Pirate number two, you must be Reporto Barofilia. Admiral Kokone has been expecting you. Pirate step two, Pirate two steps graciously aside to allow Robofilia to get on the gangway. Reporto, Reporto Barofilia, expecting? No one expects Reporto Barofilia. I'm a mastery of sneakery and infiltration. And she'd be like jumping behind things and showing how good she is at uh, hiding. Uh, that well may be, that well may be, ma'am, but there's no need for fighting or subterfuge this time. You may go straight to the captain's quarters. Reporto Barofilia, I don't get to fight any pirates. Why is this story so boring? I said there'd be daring do. I haven't daring done a single thing. Um, and that's of course her in the flashback referencing something that she does in the future because um, she's outside of time and space. Uh, Robophilia, she dejectedly bounces up the gangway because she's sad she doesn't get to fight all the pirates. Um, so then we go into Admiral Attorney Jacoby Kokone's quarters. Um, so this is, imagine kind of like a lawyer's office crossed with a pirate's captain quarters. Uh, Robophilia bursts through the door. Reporto about Ophelia, now listen here, you no good pirate. Uh, and Jacoby, allow me to interrupt you before you say something wildly offensive. Uh, the reason I arranged for your visit was simply to get airtime on your program this evening. I have a prepared speech, so there's no need for any of your absurdly enunciated questions. In fact, I'll take the liberty of engaging your mute protocol. Oh, uh, I'm going to mute everybody. Um, so uh, Jacoby whips out a remote and presses a button and Robophilia's silver crystal on her head transforms into a silver helmet that blocks her mouth so she can't speak anymore. But <laughs> Jacoby Kukone, now you are wondering about the pirate strike, yes? What could cause all of Skull, that's the Skull and Crossbones United Labor League, for those of you who remember earlier, to refuse to work? It's quite simple, really, respect. We pirate are a proud, noble people with a rich historic culture. And then there'd be a montage of the shots illustrating what she descri describes. Pirate workers are a vital part of the Figurian economy. We row your ships and build your skyscrapers. We wash your cars and put out your fires. We want run your water park and buckle your swashes. And how are we repaid for toiling away to make Figuria cleaner, safer, and sturdier? Um, Robophilia is struggling to like pull off her helmet at this time and she manages the following barb. <clears throat> Report about Ophelia. With, with money, I assume, because <laughs> they're paid workers. Jacoby Kukone, that was a rhetorical question. Double mute! And so she, uh, Robophilia gets like an even stronger helmet on her head. Oh, great, uh, robots there. Yeah, both of you. Thank you. <laughs> um, how are, so back to Jacoby. How are we repaid? By being the butt of every joke in Figuria. Pirate culture has been appropriate and mocked so thoroughly that pirates are now routinely mistaken for hipsters imitating pirates. So then there'd be a hipstery pirate next to a piratey hipster. Jacoby, and who do we have to thank for this dilution of our culture? TV networks, TV networks like the one you're now watching with shows like and then there'd be uh, promo images for more fake television shows within the world of Night Leaves at Nine. Uh, one of them being Figuria's Next Top Pirate, The Real Privateers of Mariposa Cove, Scurvy High, One, Plot, One Plank to Walk, and The Days of Our Lives. So kind of like reality shows and daytime television shows all based around pirates. These shows portray pirates as greedy, cutthroat, unwashed drunkards, well, we won't take it anymore. Until pirates are represented in media with respect, dignity, and nuance, no pirate will lift a hook. So then she unmutes Robophilia. Any questions? Report about Ophelia. You think pirates have it bad? What about robots? Do you think I like seeing my brethren and sistren represented as soulless, uncreative, inflexible automatons? No, but do I just throw up my hands and sit around bemoaning the unfairness of it all? Or do I actually fight to change perceptions by being a high profile example to the contrary? And she'd flail her arms around. 
Jacoby. That's an interesting question, Reporto Badofilia. It was rhetorical! What if you never get the respect you want? Will you stay on strike forever? Jacoby. We are prepared for all scenarios. The question is, are you? Dun, dun, dun. Jacoby presses another button <laughs> on her remote to activate a trap door be below Robophilia. Reporto Badofilia, she's falling. I'm prepared for anything! Splash! Jacoby, it was rhetorical. Uh, then she turns to the camera. Um, if you have watched some of the behind the scenes stuff, uh, you'll know that all camera people for Nightly News at Nine are clones who are named Jeff. Um, so, eh, hey, you got, you got a Jeff right there. That's great. <laughs> um, so uh, Nightly News at Nine uses an army of clone labor to do its production. Um, and so there's Jeff's and Joe's and some other type of J name. I forget all of the clones' names. Uh, but like Jeff's are the boy clones, there's female clones and gender neutral clones. So anyway, um, oh, Janet's, Janet could be. Uh, you know, I, ha I haven't written officially, so we could always change it. Um, so she turns to the camera person. You're a Jeff, right? Have you and your fe fellow J clones ever thought about forming a union? We should talk. So now the pirates are trying to get the clones on board in their union. Uh, video cuts back to the new studio, Reporto about Ophelia. So now we're out of the flashback, back in the studio. <sighs> As if it wasn't bad enough having my daily recharge interrupted mid-charge, then I had to pull myself out of the bay covered with seaweed. I've plugged in here at the NNN studio, but the voltage here is far from optimal. Turns to the leg shark. Can you believe the indignity of it all? The leg shark nods, nom, nom, nom. And then <laughs> Reporto Badofilia says, it was rhetorical! <sighs> Go to commercial. <laughs> so that's Robophilia's segment interviewing the pirates. Uh, I really thought it would be fun to change up Robophilia's interactions because in chapter two, she just like fights her way through, uh, you know, an army of pinch bots and beats up their leader. Uh, I wanted to like have that idea undermined as she tries to do the same thing with the pirates and they're having none of it because they're prepared for her. Because anybody who watches the news knows that this is what Robophilia does. She goes in and fights everybody. So they're just prepared with a bunch of legal jargon, which Robophilia is not, does not have the processor chip equipped for dealing with legal jargon. It's just not what she, she's not a lawyer botophilia. She's a reporter bot. So, uh, and her version of reporting in, involves, you know, fighting a lot. Um, I'm going to take some water before I cut to commercial, but feel free to type in the chat any thoughts or questions you have at this point. Uh, this is really great. Thank you. I'm, I'm really enjoying that. I haven't looked at this script in probably about five or six years. Hi, Clarence. Um, do I still have any of the Malifio shirts? Uh, I don't know. Uh, you mean the the ones that I printed on like little Lego figures or like the actual one you could wear as a human? Uh, I don't know if my Zazzle store still exists where I sold the Malifio shirts, but I'll, I'll look it up uh, after or later on the call maybe. Um, because technically I just put it on a website where people could buy it. So it might still be up there. Okay. <sighs> okay, so now we're going cut to commercial because as you know, in Night News at Nine, it always alternates between news segment and um, do I still have the FNAF figures? Yeah, all of my um, um, uh, McFarlane toys, FNAF uh, sets and figures are in storage with all of my Lego in a storage unit that's a few blocks away from my house. I don't know what box they're in in there, but I know I still have them. Um, I also got some bootleg Lego FNAF uh, figures recently at a convention. Uh, and then the action figure builds probably are still around too. Um, okay, back to commercial. So this is a close up on 
Log Leg Lucas. So he's a pirate with peg leg, a hook, and an eye patch. And he stands on a beach and addresses the camera directly. This is supposed to be like, um, if you've ever seen a commercial on television for like a new medicine, um, you know, and it's all like soft music and people talking about how hard their life is. That's Log Leg Lucas. Ahoy there, me hearties. I be Log Leg Lucas and I be a scurvy dog. I once was jolly as a Roger. There weren't a kraken or scallywag who could shiver me timbers. Now I be as lily-livered as a landlubber. You may be a yo ho a hoin because you be loaded to the gunnels, and never nay never will ye be getting keel-hauled by scurvy. But beware, scurvy be preying on ye right now, with a wanian and without a ye knowin'. It be a jetotten kerfuffle of Cthulhu and Demarchins on Um So then there'd be like a brown ship leaving a dock in the middle of the ocean, blue in every direction. Scurvy be sturtin when ye set sail. Out thar, there ain't but blue and brown and gray and gold. So there'd be a class up, close up of a sword fight with gray, gray blades flashing close-up of a treasure chest opening, sparkly gold pieces, right? It's all about color. Log leg, you hear, Lucas. It be a pirate's life, but it be missing a vital bit. Orange. The word orange comes on screen with him as he gestures to it, like next to him. Just a gander every day on a basketball or a tiger pelt can keep scurvy at bay. So close-up of those objects or a pirate looking at them. Um, so this is, scurvy is a real life disease that pirates got because they didn't get enough vitamin C. Vitamin C is commonly found in oranges. So this is a literal joke about the literal disease scurvy and, and the color orange. Um, anyway, if ye or one of ye shipmates have scurvy, start using orange today. Side effects be including better health, having more riches, and being a right bit smarter. Uh, so then we'd see a healthy pirate, a wealthy pirate, and a wise pirate. There ain't such a thing as using too much orange. Tis the best color in the seven seas. Pirates build an orange sandcastle. Orange. Without it, ye die of scurvy. Paid for by the council that is now pretty confident of orange's superiority. Um, so that was a pro-orange commercial from the pirate's perspective. Uh, and I think I didn't necessarily have more news scripts, but then I have some other commercials that I had written for this uh, episode. So this is an anti-orange commercial. Green voice, it's 9.15. Do you know where your children are? Picture of a clock, two parents sitting on the couch looking at each other, and then they shake their heads and shrug at the camera. Where are our kids? We don't know. Used to be you could trust they were safely in bed, or at worst, running away to join the circus. Uh, a parent looks in at a sleeping child. Another parent sees a rope made of blankets leaning out the window and rushes to look outside. And then their child is running away on an elephant uh, with a ringmaster and clowns <laughs> running away to the circus. These days, though, there's a whole new cadre of diversions and temptations that lure, lure to lure them, <laughs> that love to lure, lure them away from home. Pedal pushers, intangible gangs. So pedal pusher would be uh, somebody who has a flower on their head. Um, that's kind of like my idea of, you know, you know, don't use drugs, kids, except it's don't put flowers on your head, kids. Um, so a shady man would be offering flowers to other child children. And that's based on the old myth of Odysseus going to the land of the lotus eaters. Anyway, a shady man would be offering uh, an intangible gang, would be groups of children with coordinated outfits, uh, dance fighting in the street, because the idea is that kids fall in line with one color or the other, and then they, they fight about it. Um, green voice, the troubles of youth today are varied and legion, but the worst of them all is orange. And then there'd be a hideous orange beach with tentacles and claws and flames gnashing its mandibles and twirling its extremities menacingly. Orange is the most addictive color known to figurians. It may seem harmless, but it can destroy a promising life in the blink of an eye. And then there'd be people with fiendish looks in their eyes, building with orange, close up of their face. Orange swirls around the edges while the face transforms from a regular smiley face into a disheveled, scruffy, sad face if I could figure out a way to do that. 
It starts off small, a sandcastle at the beach, an enthusiastic interest in sea life, uh, they'd be holding up like orange sea life, or a miniature contained fusion reactor. Uh, so a child builds an orange sandcastle, another child has an aquarium with orange crabs, clams, and starfish, a third child recreates Dr. Octopus's experiment from Spider-Man 2, which was super orange. Green voice. But from there, it's just a click and a snap away to a full-fledged orange addiction. Talk to your kids about gingivitis before it's too late. Uh, so that would be illustrated by extreme close-ups of uh, orange bricks being put together. Um, and uh, last shot uh, would be like an orange monster from earlier. This message brought to you by green, a color you can rely on. Paid for by the council that will be very upset if you don't favor green after all the hard work they've done. Green. All right, so that's <laughs> the end of that script. So I didn't even finish the full episode when I was rewriting it here, but um, the other two segments that would have been here, um, so we had Robophilia and Legsley kind of reporting on pirates, um, and then we'd probably go next to um, Malifios talking about Ice Blocky, which has been teased a bunch uh, throughout the Night Leaves of Nine about like, what is Ice Blocky? It keeps coming up. And uh, basically it would come out that because he announced that Ice Blocky is a new sport during chapter two, everybody in the world came up with their own idea of what Ice Blocky is and started playing it without any oversight from him. So he inadvertently made his job super hard for himself um, because um, now there's a million different variants of Ice Blocky, a sport he had an idea for, that are all over the world that he now has to report on, even though all he wanted to do was have people use ice to destroy their town or something. His idea for Ice Blocky was like, push a giant glacier at New Block City. That's what he was gonna say <laughs> um, Ice Blocky was, but everybody else had a different idea. And so then the kind of emergent, um, uh, thing that turns into Ice Blocky is that because all the pirates are out of work, they came up with their own version of Ice Blocky that became super popular and became the leading type of Ice Blocky, which is where you put a magician in a block of ice, you freeze them in ice, and then you push them around like a Robo Wars type arena where there's like flames and saws suiting out and the goal is to get your magician out of the block of ice as fast as possible using these different things while keeping them intact um so like if you like accidentally cut off a magician's arm while you're melting the block of ice then you lose a point um, the magicians are always fine at the end of the battle because magicians in this world have a power so that they um survive death um, it's one of the consequences of how magic works in Figuria. Um, but anyway, so then Malifios would then have to report on this new sport that he hates, um, that he inadvertently invented, and it would be further preventing him from doing his actual goal of destroying New Block City. Um, but then he'd try to turn it into a way to destroy New Block City by taking everybody's enthusiasm for it and creating a big um ceremony to celebrate ice blocky and so within a single day of this sport being invented we've already got our first world tournament of it happening that um robert slash malifios has orchestrated and he's reporting live from that and it's on top of a giant glacier on a mountain right outside of new block city and he is uh trying to plant dynamite under it so that this glacier will fall down the mountain and destroy new block city and of course his plan would go awry for some silly reason. Uh, or, so my thought there was that he would actually succeed in having a glacier fall off the mountain and slowly edge towards New Block City, but it might take several weeks for it to get there. Um, so he would feel successful, but then in a later episode, it would somehow be um, subverted and all of his attempts to destroy New Block City would be of course foiled at the last minute. So that was kind of my thought for what the sports segment would be in, the, in this version of chapter three. Um, and then the final one would be um, Phil and Sherry at the orange green war zone trying to like track down Zundar and um, get him out of the influence of green. Um, and <laughs> I wrote a lot of different versions of that, uh, none of which I, so the first version had them going to Tommy Turntable's house and trying to convince him 
to change his color, a favorite color away from orange, uh, because that was the start of the Orange Green War. Um, I didn't end up liking that script. Like my ultimate joke there was just that then he changed his favorite color to purple. And I in introduced this whole purple character who came along with Phil and Sherry. And that was kind of the reason. Um, but um, since then, I've been thinking a lot more about what I would want to do with this episode. And I feel like um, it, when and if I ever have time to really bring this to life, you know, more than the, just the script, even if it was like, um, like a radio drama where I got some of the voice actors to come back and redo their parts and recorded a really high quality version of this and maybe had some sketches um, rather than doing a full animation, that rather than focusing on pirates, I'd actually like to focus on Zundar for chapter three. So my new concept for chapter three is actually that the episode takes place inside Zundar's mind. Um, and it's a mind heist a la Inception. And so Robophilia leads the whole team inside of Zundar to try and take away the influence of green from him so that they can get Zundar back because Zundar is so powerful, he could easily end the war um, were he not under the influence of green. But right now he's like turning the tide of the war um, but, you know, rather than trying to overcome him with force, they try to overcome him, like, psychologically. And so we'd actually go, uh, you know, Z Robophilia would use, like, her magic portal technology to take everybody inside Zundar's mind. And then we'd see them wandering around through, like, different levels. The top level of Zundar's mind would be, like, a theme park that's all dragon-themed. Um, so there'd be, like, a Zundar roller coaster. Um, the level below that would be like a fancy dinner party only for dragons and Phil and Sherry would have to turn into fake dragons that would still look like Phil and Sherry to blend in there. Um, and then like the final version would be like, you know, Zundar's like kind of private thought cave where, you know, he's alone, but you know, one character would get through and kind of talk to him and get him out of the funk would be the, the arc I'm now thinking I'd do for chapter three, but I haven't even started. Um, a script for that but that's I think I've recorded some voiceover or some when I was thinking about that and ideating on it I recorded myself talking about it a little bit so I've got some of the ideas started to flesh out but I haven't even really started to put them in script form and like that's the whole process I follow whenever I make an animation is right first I need to have a script and feel really good about it because uh, if I don't feel think it's like the best thing um, then like I'm not going to be able to keep up my motivation to take it from script to voice acting to animatic and storyboard and then animate it because animating is actually the very last step of making an animation and if you've read the Lego animation book um, the book that I and David Pagano wrote um, you can see like what our whole process was and there's parts from Yep, there it is. You, you've got all the props today. Um, uh, you can actually see how the process is that we take uh, another Lego animation book, perfect. The process that we take from start to finish with an animation um, is really, you know, script, storyboard, um, voice acting, animatic, and then at like close to the very end is animation and then a little bit of editing and releasing it. So. You know, I always want to make sure before I start on something that I have a good sense of it. And I don't necessarily need, like when I did chapter one, I definitely changed parts of it as I was animating. So like, uh, you know, after I had done like maybe the first two parts of chapter one and released those, I was still tweaking the script for later parts and ditto with chapter two, especially so, since I ran a Kickstarter in chapter two and, you know, people ended up being cameo minifigures in it. Uh, and I definitely want to do something like that with chapter three, you know, of letting people uh, see themselves as Lego minifigures in it, stuff like that. Uh, I just, <laughs> I just haven't had time. I'm also now at a place in my life where I'm switching to a new career in video games. Um, and so I'm also thinking, oh, maybe it would be better as like a, an interactive like adventure, like game uh, that I could produce. Um, uh, cause that would be in some ways less intensive than an animation, even though games are super complicated. I'm not familiar with the neverhood. I'll have to look into that. Um, but, um, yeah, just the idea that maybe you are Reporto Botophilia exploring Zundar's brain, 
uh, and maybe you would switch different characters at different points. Um, Cause that, you know, I've had a lot of concepts for Nightly News at Nine games since the beginning of the series. I, I wanted to do like a prequel game that's about Malifios while he's in um, prison and um, he uh, is trying to escape from this minimum security prison and inadvertently starts the war between green and orange by writing letters while he's in prison, something like that. Anyway, uh, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen for a second and um, drink some water. Um, so my thought for, we've got like another hour and a half um, was that I could go through some of my old Nightly News at Nine documents of like where I had written out days of the week and their names <laughs> and other ideas I had for scripts. Uh, if y'all want to know more about my thought process for Nightly News at Nine, or I could start building something digitally um, like a giant Zundar head because that would theoretically be a set piece for chapter three. Um, so, you know, you can type in the chat whether you'd rather ha have like see me build or see um, like more NNN plot stuff, documents, okay. It's one vote for documents. I'll give people a few minutes to type. Build, build. Three for build. Two for documents. Four for build. <laughs> 